when it comes to training and you have a multi-dog household it is useful to build up a duration in one of the dog's beds so that you are able to work with the other one and then drop them a treat ever so occasionally and that's what I do with my dogs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start working with Jake first. Now Jake is blind, Jimmy is not blind um, and he is you're a year old this week, aren't you? So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to take these at the minute. I'm working on some scent work with Jake, which is to do with the car, <laughs> which J Jim already knows that one, sort of. I'm quite good at it. And then I'm working on some retrieve with Jimmy. So I'm going to try and do it where I can swap them over as well. So, Jim, go ahead. Okay. Now what I've got here is a little pot of treats. I'll be gone in, I'm just gonna scuff through a few. And now what I'm gonna do, so if they do run out, I'm just gonna wait a minute till they back off, okay. Okay, so he's back in his bed there. And what I'm gonna do, I'm just going to toss him a treat ever so occasionally. He's Jake. What I'm doing is working on duration. So I'm going to pop that there. Yes. Now, if you first start to do this, and what you'll want to do to start with is build up the duration in the bed. Um, but you want to start feeding them fairly quickly while they're still in there, just to build the... Um, association up and then you can start reducing the frequency a little bit and I must say Jimmy's been quite good because there's been a treat lying on the floor over there now that Jake missed for a good 30 seconds to a minute and he stayed there so that's really good and what I'm going to do I'm going to vary the frequency that I'm giving Jimmy these treats as well so I've just given him sort of two in a row there and then I've given Jake about five there before I give that to him yes good boy okay I'm going to keep that away while he's doing that good boy Good lad. Jake. Good boy. Good boy, Jim. Okay. Now we're going to try and swap them over, which is the hard part. Jim. Okay. Jake. Bed. Oh, my foot. Please excuse my very sexy foxy slippers. Jake, come on. Bed. And then because I've been throwing treats in there, generally he's going to spend a little bit of time sniffing, which is fine. And then he'll lie down in a minute. There we go. Good boy. Nice. Nice. Well done, Jim. Okay, there you go. Okay, so now we're working on a little bit of the start of a retrieve with Jimmy. So... Jake literally just threw that at your face. I forget that he's blind sometimes. That's my fault that he's got out of bed. Hopefully he'll get back in it. Yes. So it's so Jake on the Yes, we're going duration. Where did Jake get any duration with this? His nose on the pony's third side. Yes. 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 Jimmy, you little rascal. Oh, 
can't you? Cool, so that's just a little bit of sort of what I do when I'm training. Now, both dogs have been built up separately on the bed or the platform or whatever it is. For Jimmy, he'll use a settle mat, so just like a, a piece of fabric, whereas Jake needs to be in or on something generally with him being blind. Um, he, he doesn't grasp the zone quite as well. Um, but, I mean, he's, he's, I've not even asked him to go and get back in and he's got back in, bless him. Um, so yeah, build that up separately first and then what you can start to do is start adding some distractions in. So that could be that you can start um, doing silly little dances around the kitchen while they stay in their bed and then come back and give them a treat and then eventually you can build it up so that you can do training with one dog while the other one chills out and yeah i do still reward them fairly frequently because they're doing a nice thing um but to be fair especially this one is uh very good so yeah i hope you found that useful and if you want to figure out a little bit more about the first part then check out the other video and i will put a link to it in that corner.